Hi, this is Andy from GPS Training. Continuing on from our last video on the overview of our free Ordnance Survey route planning software. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can plan a route on the software, amend and edit the route, and then save the route to your computer, ready to transfer onto your compatible GPS device, GPS watch. So at the moment I've got the map centered in the Rothbury area. On our earlier video on the overview, we showed you how you can move the map around and search for place names or grid references to move the map to your start location. So what I'm going to do in the go to box in the top left of the screen here, I'm going to just back um, using my cursor, highlight the name Rothbury and hit the backspace delete button on my keypad. And I'm going to type in a grid reference. If you've got a grid reference out of a guidebook, Ordnance Survey grid reference, that's what I'm going to type in. So I've got NZ, which is my map sheet number, 053 my Eastings, 988 my Northings. So I type in the six figure grid reference with no spaces and the map um, NZ, the sheet number in front of it. If you had an eight figure or a 10 figure reference, um, from an Ordnance Survey map or guidebook with an Ordnance Survey grid reference, you just type in all 10 numbers or all eight numbers. And then I simply click on go. And the map will now center with this cross in the middle of where that grid reference is. So I'm gonna do a walk from the Lord and Shores car park to the Simon Side Hills near where we work. So in our earlier video, we showed you how you can move the map around. So I'm just left clicking with my mouse just to move the map around to see where I'm gonna go. So I'm just gonna move the little black cross just to give you an idea. Um, just with the, the mouse at the moment, I'm gonna come from the car park and just walk along the ridge here, Dove Crag and up to the Simon Side Hills. And then I'll come back down through into the woods and then I can come back along the road. Again, you'd have an idea where you're gonna do your walk from possibly a guidebook you've got in front of you. Um, and maybe you're just looking at a paper map and planning a route and you just wanna draw it out on this digital map so you can save it and send to your GPS device. If I zoom in using the plus and minus in the top right of the screen or using the scroll wheel on my mouse, I can zoom in and change it to a one to 25 map. So that's what I've done now. And to start planning your route, all you do is, is one single left click with your mouse with the little plus icon that you can see me moving around in the center of the screen. You get that where you want your start point to be. So I've got it where the car park symbol is here on the footpath. I simply left click once and now I get this new route box appear with my first number one point. Now when you start planning the route, if that box is in the wrong place or getting in the way the your route box, when I move my mouse over where it says your route, this box that's appeared, and I get this little cross symbol appear, if I now left click and keep the left click of my mouse down, I can drag that box so that it's out of the way. Now, if you were meaning to just move the map round and you weren't meaning to actually start a route, you can click on the little cross symbol to the right of your route, which I'll actually do now, and that will close the box down and delete your route without saving it. So I'll just start that again. I'm gonna left click with my mouse on the P symbol, the parking symbol next to the footpath on the far right of the map. Got my first point. Root box has appeared. You can see here there's no length in there at the moment on distance. And you simply just click your next point where you want to navigate to. Normally you'd look at a junction on a footpath or where the footpath changes direction in a big way. So there's my second point. And you can see in the root box we've now got data starting to appear. And then I'm just going to click my next point and just click along the footpath here. On a modern Garmin GPS handheld device, we have a maximum number of 250 VIA points. So I don't want the total where I've got one to five at the moment in the your route, we don't want to go past 250. If you were doing a long distance route, you would split it into days and save your day one, your day two, your day three, etc. So I'm just left clicking. And then if I want to move the map, I can just left click with my mouse, keep it held down and drag the map. I'm just going to show you now if I was trying to move the map and I accidentally marked a point by mistake, which I've just done, so I didn't want to mark this last point to delete it, I simply go to the your route box. And then when you hover over the your route box, you'll see um, I've got the eight points here at the moment. If you had more than a long list of points you have you get a little scroll wheel appear little gray sorry bar down the right hand side of the your route box that lets you scroll down but my last point i can see number eight and i don't know if you can see when i actually move over the points they change to a red color on the actual route of the little circular dots which are my via points so if i move over the last one now number eight you'll see the very last point that i marked at the wrong place 
on the route is in red and if I move it up to number seven you'll see the next circle up is now in red so I know it's number eight that I want to delete so I simply go to the delete button here the delete waypoint eight that you can now see in the your route left click with my mouse and that point that I marked by mistakes now deleted and to continue the route I just left click again on the footpath I can see here where I want my next point I'll just mark a few more points here just to give you an idea and that is my route marked now I'm going to show you how you can edit points as well if you've put a point in the wrong place actually I'll do this route a little bit further I did say I was going to do it as a circular route so we'll uh, my apologies we'll add a little bit extra on here but I'm going to put a few place bits in the wrong place on purpose just so I can show you how you edit it you can move your map around using the arrow keys on your keypad as well so even though I'm left clicking and holding the the left mouse button down to drag the map you can use the arrow keys on your mouse uh, sorry on your computer as well so here we go just marked a few more points here and we'll just finish it off again I can drag this your root box out the way and just come right the way back down here just about finished now there we go and when we do a circular route we try not to join it at the end otherwise it's hard sometimes when you get to a start of a route to see the difference between the start and the end so we always don't we don't close a route we leave it open with just a small distance between the start and the finish so now if I want to edit this route that's what I'm going to show you next now so if I've got any bits in the wrong place which I did do on purpose through the woods here so I've just dragged the map to the woods if I want to move any of these points all I need to do is move the little plus um, cursor over one of the white dots or the little squares you see in between the points so if I move it over this circle you see it changes to the hand symbol so it's a black cross and then when it changes to the hand symbol in the middle of the map now if I left click with my mouse I can drag that circle onto the footpath and then just let go and it's now moved that point again if I move the map up here and I want to move these ones here I can just drag them by left clicking on the circle or the square and that was me just zooming out by mistake so I'm just going to that's what happens sometimes with the scroll wheel on your mouse so it's not always the best thing to do if you just got to be careful there we go I've zoomed back in just using the plus and minus at the top of the screen and we'll just move these points by left clicking holding the left click of the mouse and dragging them back onto the footpath what we have noticed which is a nice feature if you want to add any extra points into a route just to reshape it and um, I'll just find a good example to show you here so this bit down here in the woods um, to the right is where it is Chester Hope I can't click on the route and add points if I click on the blue line we don't add any points but if we actually move one of the points ever so slightly so one of the little via points the little circle circles if I just move that and then move it back what you see actually happens I'll just do that again here move the little square as we start moving points around extra ones start appearing in the line so if I just move a few points ever so slightly and then move them back we now get these extra points in the line that I can then adjust and move and you'll see every time I do that now there's lots of extra little squares appear now they don't appear as via points in your route so we're not adding bits on there it's just the circles that are the via points that we can see or, or what we call waypoints as well in the route um, box so where we've got the your route box now because I've got a lot more points to be able to scroll down and see them all when I move my cursor to the very far right of the box past the delete options just drag the box down so you can see this into the middle of the screen what I can then do is scroll when I click on that your route box I can scroll down using my mouse and you've got this little grey bar that appears down the right hand side takes me to the bottom and I can see here I've got 32 points now you can make this box a little bit bigger by dragging the corners of the box um, and expanding it if you do need to again I can just drag the box in by left clicking on the edges to make it smaller again so we've got 32 points in this route so I know it's okay for a Garmin device that'll take a maximum of 250 via points so now that we've edited and amended some points by moving them around what we can do is delete points if we've got any by mistake so just dragging the map so it's to the left of this box and then I'm just going to zoom in using the plus and minus again just drag it around a bit so it's a bit easier to see and I'm going to show you when you move over these points how you see them change color on the actual map so if I go back to my very first point so on the your route box I'm just going to click and then scroll up to the very first point 
So when I hover over the first point here, you'll see on the map next to the parking symbol, the little white circle changes red. If I move it down to the next one, you're looking at the white circles rather than the little squares in between. The next one down changes red. And if I move it to the third one, above where it says Curic, C-U-R-R-I-C-K, bottom left of the map, it changes red. If I wanted to delete that point out, I simply move to the delete here, to the right of number three, hit delete, and you'll see on the map now I've got this straight line where it's actually deleted that point out. If I've done that by mistake, all I need to do is um, drag that square back down onto the root, onto the footpath, and then I get an extra point appear, so again I can reshape it and drag that down, and that's that back in there now. If you want to rename the points, because I know on some GPS devices, say on a Garmin device, you can, on a handheld device, go into an active route and look at what the next point is that's coming up. Now, you don't have to rename these points, but where we've got these numbers here, one, two, three, four, etc., in the Your Route box, they just have a grid reference shown at the minute in grey. I can go into that box and call my first point. Um, I'd call this something like, because it's the Simon Side Hills SH1, just for a quick abbreviation can't have the same name twice so I wouldn't call it necessarily car park or I could have called it SHCP for Simon's Side Hills Car Park or Lord and Shores LS1 LSCP so you can name them if you do want to name them and I'm just going to call this one SH2 and sorry I've just scrolled down with my mouse there so I'll just scroll back up and call the next one SH3. So as you actually do them, you can rename them. Just depends on what GPS device you've got to whether you can actually see active root waypoints in your device, but it is something that you can do. So we've showed you how you can create a simple route. You can edit the route by just moving the little circular points around. You can use this delete option in the Your Route to delete points and you can rename the points. Now you'll see in the Your Route box, it's got the information about my route. It tells me it's 5.11 miles, 8.22 kilometers, gives me a cent data. What's nice as well, it uses the Naismith rule for giving you an estimate of how long this walk would take. I know we all walk at different speeds, but the Naismith rule was invented by a gentleman called William Naismith, a Scottish mountaineer in 1892. And with his rule that a lot of mountaineers and hill walkers use, he basically puts one hour down for every three miles or five kilometers that you walk and adds an extra hour for every 2000 feet or 600 meters of ascent. So that's where it's getting the distance, I'm sorry, the estimated time it's gonna take you to do this walk. And where it's his name, and it says new route, that's where you delete that new route and you give it a name of the actual route. So I'm going to call this one Simon Side Hills. So whatever you want to name your route. Once you've done that and you're happy with it, um, you can also view the profile which I haven't showed you. So above the, sorry, below the distances, we've got view profile here in the your route box. So if I view the profile, it gives me the elevation profile. So you can have a look at the elevation profile. So I'm just going to close that down. And if I scroll down to the very bottom on the Your Route box, I just need to left click back on the Your Route box, then scroll down. I'm using my mouse to scroll down. And right at the bottom, it says Download GPX. That's the format that most Garm um, GPS devices, including Garmin, SatMap devices will work with and your GPS watches. So I'm going to download that now to the, um, my computer. And then on the next videos, we'll show you how you can import routes into the software from third party websites and finally how you send them to your device. So I'm just going to click on download GPX here. Depending on your computer, um, the Mac I'm using today, and I know the Windows computer, it will normally go to the downloads folder of your computer, depending how you've got your PC set up. So I'll be able to find that now in my downloads. I can see on the bottom left of my computer here, it's actually showing Simon Side Hills GPX, and that has went to the downloads folder on my Mac. And it's the same on a Windows computer, it would normally go to the downloads folder on your computer. So if I'm happy that I've got that saved now, on my computer in the downloads of course I can drag it from my computer into a different folder to save it on the desktop of my computer I can simply close this box down where it says your route and the little cross and that route um, will be gone if I OK it to say delete it and we've got a fresh map ready to start a new route so I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching